Hi guys, my name is Maddie Clemens and I'm a writing tutor at Trevecca Nazarene University. Um, and today we're going to be talking about how to format MLA style papers. If you're looking for a video about how to write MLA in-text citations or how to write citations for your works cited page, you might want to check our webpage for a different video. This video is specifically just going to be talking about general MLA formatting. Um, so on this document here, I have a few items listed as to what is required for MLA. So we're going to be talking about the double spacing, the font, the margins, the header, the heading, your title, and then we will talk about the Works Cited page and that I'm going to talk about how to just do the general setup and the general formatting for it. But we won't be going into detail about how to write the citations and how to format them. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is open up a blank document. And once that's done, you're just going to want to do a quick check on your margin. So Microsoft Word will usually, and if you're using Google Docs or anything like that, it's going to automatically put one inch margins all around. But we'll just make sure. So we'll go to Layout, Margins, and as you can see, they're all set to one inch, which is what we want. If they weren't, you could just find it here on the drop down menu or go to Custom Margins and set them there. So then we're going to go to the Home tab. And the next thing you'll want to do is go ahead and make sure that your font is correct. So the reason that I do all of this general setup before I start writing is so that it's out of the way before I start writing my paper. Um, it also kind of helps me have a little sense of accomplishment before I start writing. Um, you know, I've got all this set up. I don't have to worry about going back through and highlighting the entire paper and setting it or like worrying about the formatting getting messed up. It's just already set before I even start writing anything. So um, it's already set on 12 point font. If it wasn't, you just click here and go to change it. And then next we're going to change the font itself. So um, I always use Times New Roman. Some professors don't have a preference. You could use Arial or Calibri as long as it's a legible font. There usually is um, some professors don't necessarily mind, but I prefer Times New Roman. All right, so now that we've got our font and our margins, we're going to go ahead and check on our spacing. So to fix the spacing on your paper, you're going to go to this button here that has the blue up and down arrow keys. Um, so we'll click it. And the quick fix to fix your spacing is just to click this 2.0 right here to make your spacing double. But instead, we're going to go down to line spacing options. So occasionally, people will come in with papers where um, they have what we call extra space between paragraphs. And basically what happens is every time you push enter, um, a little extra space appears. So if your professor has ever told you you have extra space between your paragraphs or there's too much space here, this could be the culprit. So basically what happens is down here under spacing, um, before and after, if it has like a six or occasionally it'll have an eight, it kind of, it makes a, a little extra space every time you push enter, which you don't want. You always want to make sure that this is zero point. So this is why I always go into line spacing options before I start writing anything. Um, because you don't want that extra space. So both before and after should be set to zero, and then your line spacing will be set to double. And we'll click OK, and we're all good to go there. So the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and work on our header. So there's two ways you can get to the header on your document. You can go up here to insert, and then you can insert a header and your page number, which we'll also talk about. Or you can just double click at the top of the document and it will appear. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is insert your page number. So occasionally some people will just try to write the page number, so I'm just going to type a 1 in here. Um, and what happens is everything that you put in a header automatically appears on every single page following. So you can see here there's a 1 up here, which we don't want. We want the pages to actually be numbered. So we're going to erase that, and we're going to use the page number function. So we'll go up here to the button, page number. So it's already set to the top of the page, which we want, and then it's set to the right, which we also want. So top right hand corner, so we'll hit OK, and there it is. We'll scroll down, and as you can see, it's going to start numbering the pages like it's supposed to. So we're already, um, we've got the page number, now you just need your last name included in the header. So I'm going to type my last name, and there it is. So your last name should be right aligned, it should be over here right in front of the page number. Um, you don't want it over on the left hand side, it should be on the right, right beside the page number. And so just one extra little um, nitpicky thing is that occasionally when you write in your header, the font will change. 
So as you can see up here, we're no longer in Times New Roman. We've gone back to Calibri. So I'm just going to change it really quick so that it matches. And there we go. So now we're back in Times New Roman. So to get out of the header, you can just double click anywhere on the page. And then just make sure you're at the top left hand side of your document again. So next we're going to start working on this heading. So the first line of your heading um, is going to be your name. And you'll notice that I'm typing on the left hand side of the page. So your heading is going to appear on the left hand side. So I've got left alignment, but it's not going to appear in the header. So if you type it in the header, again, it's going to appear on every page, which we don't want. This only appears on the first page. So we've got our name, and next we'll write our professor's name. So if your professor has his or her doctorate, you'll want to write doctor instead of professor here. Um, if you're not sure, you might want to check your syllabus. Um, usually that information is listed there. And then the third line is your course title. So if I'm taking English 1020, I've got the course name right there. So occasionally a course will be offered multiple times a week. So there are different sections of the course. Um, so let's say you're in section two and your professor wants you to include your section number just so that he or she can keep everything organized. So to do that, all you'll do is add a dash and then O2. So again, usually this information is going to be on the syllabus if you're not sure. Um, you can also just ask your professor if you're not sure. So occasionally, you could also just write the course name instead of actually writing the title. So if I'm taking an American literature class, you could just write out American literature there. Um, but we're going to just keep it as English 1020. And then the date. So in America, we tend to write our date like this with the month, the date, comma, the year. But MLA actually requires you to write the date, the month, and the year with no comma. Um, I actually didn't know this until I started tutoring, but this is the way that MLA requires you to write your date. Um, and so some people will, um, and you're, I'm definitely guilty of this, I'll change the date on it to say like, oh, I wrote this paper two weeks ago, even though I actually wrote it last night right before it was due. Um, most professors are like, according to MLA guidelines, you're actually going to want to put the due date of the assignment. So even if you wrote it two weeks before it was due, just go ahead and write the the date of the deadline there. It's also going to help you just if you ever have to go back and look at a paper, just know when the due date was. So next we'll push enter one more time. And now we're going to center this. So here we're going to write our title. So I know for a lot of people writing the title of your paper can be a very daunting task. It's sometimes very difficult, especially at the very beginning before you've written anything. So what I'll do is I'll just usually write title just like I have here and I'll highlight it so that I don't forget it. And then before I submit it, um, I'll work on my title. If you do that, just make sure you delete the highlighting before you turn it in. Um, the title does not need to be in bold. It doesn't need to be italicized or underlined or anything like that. It's just going to be in plain font, just like I've got here. So you'll push enter again, and you'll see we're still center aligned. And we're about to start our first paragraph. So we're going to go back up here and do left alignment and hit tab. So um, for MLA style, you're going to enter tab before any of your paragraphs start. That signifies the beginning of a new paragraph. And so then we would start writing. Um, right there. So now that we've got all of the general formatting for the very first page, we're going to start talking about the works cited. So the works cited is going to appear on the very um, after the last page. So let's say you've got you've written this whole entire first page, you have all words here, and then you've got a line of text here. Um, you wouldn't put your works cited just like in the middle of this page if it has information here. It's going to be on a page of its own. Um, so to start your work cited, you're going to, again, make sure it's on a clean page, a page all by itself, and you're going to center it just like you did the title and type out work cited. And then you'll push enter, go back to left alignment, and then you're going to start your first citation. So for MLA work cited pages, they need to be in alphabetical order. So um, usually the first thing in an MLA citation is the author's last name. So usually it's going to be alphabetized by author's last name. And I'm going to show you a sample document in a second um, so you can kind of see that better. But again, it's still going to be double spaced, nothing fancy about the spacing. Again, no underline or bolding the actual work cited. So here I've got a sample MLA paper. Um, as you can see, you might notice this. There's a 
you might see that there's a little bit of an extra space here. So I'm going to show you guys about that extra space between paragraphs. So between my name and my professor's name, there's normal double spacing. But here it's a little bigger. So to fix that, um, you would just highlight where the problem is. Go to their spacing button. And as you can see here, nothing is showing up here. So we're just going to go ahead and make sure it's both at zero. We're still double. Like OK. And as you can see, it jumped back up. So everything is back to normal there. So I've got my title. And so you might see here I have this in italics. So in MLA style, every time you have a longer work, like if you're referring to a movie, or in this case, this is a book title, you're going to put it in italics. So that's why I have this part of my title in italics, because it's the title of a book that I'm analyzing in this paper. Um, if you're like talking about a short story or a poem, you would put it in quotation marks. And so we're going to scroll down. So as you can see, my very last page is on a page of its own. I have, and actually there's a little typo there, works cited. If you only have one work that you're citing, you can put work cited. But here we have works cited. Um, again, you can see it's in alphabetical order. You'll also notice that the second line of the citation is indented. So we've got the indention there. Again, it's alphabetized. And we're good to go on our work cited. So if you have extra questions about what MLA format looks like, you can always look on Purdue OWL um, or some of our other videos that we're going to be posting. So if you have any other questions about MLA format, I would check there. Um, again, Purdue OWL. So what I will normally do is I'll go to Google and I'll just Google Purdue OWL MLA format. And their website comes up. And you can go here. They also have a sample MLA paper you can see. You can go and learn more about your citations and just the general formatting. But I hope this video has been helpful and I hope um, that as you're writing your MLA style paper that um, you know how to format it now. So thank you guys for watching and I hope you check out some of our other videos.